Hello, GR Contemporary Arts. I'm Christina Wong. I'm going to answer some of the questions that you sent me to answer. Um, you asked me to talk about myself and my practice. So first of all, I'm Christina Wong. Um, I consider myself a performance artist first, a comedian second, and currently I am an elected representative in Koreatown, Los Angeles. I serve on the Neighborhood Council. I consider it an extension of my work as a performance artist. I actually found myself running because November 2016, after a very certain specific, um, oh my God, what the fuck just happened election, I, <laughs> I was like, wow, artists and politicians have switched jobs. And as an artist who used to make really kind of crazy spectacle things happen um, on stages, it didn't seem to serve uh, the world to react to an already absurd world with absurd art. So I decided, well, if politicians are going to take my job as the spectacle makers, I'm going to take their jobs um, as politicians. So I ran for office and I created this show, which you can see the set behind me, Christina Wong for Public Office. And it's a show about how I ran and serve in local office as an artist. And it's a lot about the intersection of arts and politics. And it's not that big of a difference I'm learning is that um, politicians make symbols and so do artists. What is art? Mm, mm. <laughs> I started to answer that question. What is art? Um, I think art is, I think we're making art all the time. Some better and more thought out than others. I think we uh, now mostly exist through mediated spaces. Most of our interactions with people are usually through the internet or through um, scrolling through their feed and, and experiencing very curated versions of themselves that they deliver on social media. Um, so I think that in itself is a sort of art. I think language is a medium, which is an art, which you know takes sort of the thoughts and these feelings that we have and synthesizes them into sounds that have meaning that is constantly shifting and changing because of rap lyrics or uh, things that are being canceled or whatever. Like all these things are constantly shifting. So I think of art as uh, maybe the most intentional of those representations. Uh, and um, I think it's, hmm, yeah. I, would, <laughs> I look at art as sort of, yeah, an intentional mediated, I look at art as an intentional mediate, in, I look at art, take it from there. I look, for, <laughs> I look at art as an intentional mediated presentation of very specific ideas. So I guess like, the, the sort of lowest version form of that is someone takes a selfie in front of a mountain and put it up on Instagram. You could say that's art because they use a filter to change the color of their face. And then another is like maybe a four year durational project where a performance artist decides to run for public office. So it's a set um, that looks somewhat kind of presidential and performs a very rehearsed and scripted monologue around it. So there's, there is the gamut. What, what point is art at in America? What point is art at in America? Well, it's hard to say right now because we're, we're literally in a time right now, uh, I'm doing this interview right now with you in November. We're eight months into the pandemic. We can't go into theaters. We can't go into galleries. We can't go into these sort of neutral spaces where we would sit down and experience would kind of play out for us. Uh, instead, we're now, um, we're looking into everyone's house and every Zoom meeting becomes like a very unstructured version of a reality show where we're like, oh, that's their bed. Oh, that's their cat. Oh, that's their child. Um, oh, they live in a studio, you know? And um, I think that we've all, uh, I know some people have set up their homes to, to do Zoom meetings and things like that. So we've all like sort of figured out there's a script about our lives that people can read into and we're playing along with that. So where is art at right now? I think we're in an interesting place in terms of, uh, of, of thinking about race and social justice and centering um, a lot of artists that in an, uh, okay, let me, let me take a step back. <laughs> I would say that a lot of the institutions that have supported at least financially or, um, the systems that bring an audience to a work have been largely white run institutions. Um, at least those are the ones that tend to have the most money. 
And now we're in this moment, which is not just a health pandemic, but we had a racial pandemic, a pandemic where we recognize systemic racism, that a lot of questions are being made of these theaters that have uh, the power to program um, and and pay for a lot of the, the, the like good legitimate theater that they present. And um, this has been a moment where I see a lot of artists challenging those institutions and asking them to think about the white supremacy that's embedded in their, um, in their boards, in their programming, uh, in everything about their staff and stuff like that, and, and uh, working instead towards being an anti-racist organization. And that's different than saying not racist, but, but anti-racist is this active thing because art is also active. Like how can they actively acknowledge that racism, even in art, which should be this form that we think of as like, as being not racist because everyone is welcome and we're all so cool and whatever, like that we can actually, uh, we actually need to eradicate it and think about having those conversations in an art space first because culture ultimately will move legislation and culture. Well, art moves culture and then culture will move legislation. So that's where we are at as artists. We're in this interesting pause right now um, as Americans in the arts <laughs> because we, we can't experience stuff the same way. And a lot of the work I'm experiencing is quite guerrilla. And this has been a moment where I find like a lot of the artists who um, who didn't have the privilege of being presented by big expensive theaters, who didn't have whole teams behind them, who didn't have the luxury of staff to work with, like, like me, like, <laughs> you know, the one person show people um, have kind of an advantage because we can just kind of, we've been used to scrapping and running around and doing things. And this is that moment where okay, we're just gonna do that again. We're gonna scrap and do this show uh, in my house for the computer, you know? Um, so it's an interesting time, but there's also a lot to report on, I think, on this time in our work. There's a lot of like cut the bullshit uh, and, and what really matters. And there's so much grief and so much emotion. So I think that's definitely gonna shift what a lot of work is about. And a lot of super high, heady concept work um, might go on the back burner because I think right now a lot of people are just sort of responding to immediate emotive things. Now, I am not an art historian. I don't have a picture of the whole fucking thing. Uh, this is just sort of the sense I get and I'm probably projecting. In a global art world, is there a difference between the East and West? Well, I don't know if you asked me that question because I'm Asian uh, American, I'm Chinese American, I'm a third generation Chinese American. I am not an art history expert, especially I, I only know, uh, I, know I know very little about uh, contemporary art in Asia. Like I'll try to catch a gallery show here and there, or maybe a company comes to town and I'll watch their show, but I, I actually don't think that's a good gauge for me to answer that question from uh, an authoritative lens. I will say <laughs> that in my own work, um, I have toured internationally and I've, I am very clear that a lot of my work doesn't make sense to an international audience, that there's a lot of context um, for the, for sort of the culture that I respond to in my work is, uh, and, Asian American woman, a third generation Chinese American who's lived most of her life pretty much in California, um, that a lot of things that I reference make sense to audiences here that don't even make sense to audiences on the East Coast, let alone Europe, let alone Africa, which I had quite an interesting time touring in. Um, some stuff made sense and some was just, they were just like, what the fuck is she talking about? So, uh, no, I, I don't know. That's a, that's a very big question, which I don't even know how to answer. Um, but there is a big difference. <laughs> I couldn't even tell you what it is, but there's a huge, there's a huge difference. And, um, a lot of it, I think might have to do with the distance an artist has to, to what feels mainstream or powerful or dominant culture. And I feel like a lot of art might be in response to that, to that individual artist. And there's so many different identities in the East and in the West that I don't want to 
generalize and make any blanket statements about what that means because I am a very specific identity on the spectrum of identity. I, I would consider myself a Western artist um, if you if we, if we have to pick sides. Um, so I think that's all. I think those are all your questions. Good luck editing that. Uh, I hope that's everything. I put my, I put makeup on for this, so uh, and these lights are giving me a headache. So I hope I hope that's good, and you'll find stuff and figure out how to edit this. Yeah.